Well, hello, folks. Pastor Rock, I'm doing well today. Well, I've heard a lot of people say over a lot of different years that Satan has just been turned loose on me. And uh, because of that, they have thought maybe that the challenge that they're going through or whatever might be facing them in their life, that uh, the Lord just said to Satan, just go get them. Well, that's not exactly true because we have an example of what happens. In fact, we have the, uh, well, we have two examples that that happens to, but one in written form, we have one in spiritual context. Um, if Satan were loosed on you, uh, if God did not protect you with his angels, with his love, with his power, you would be destroyed on the hoof. You wouldn't be hurt. You wouldn't be uh, backed up. You wouldn't be down. You would be destroyed. We find that in the book of Job. Job was a righteous man. He had done well. Uh, he feared God. He lived his life right. He had a bunch of kids. He had a bunch of animals. Uh, he had a lot of things going on. And Satan in the first chapter of Job comes to uh, heaven and, and challenges God about uh, Job. And of course, uh, he says, you know, Job, the reason he serves is because you've given him all this stuff. And uh, of course, the Lord said, that's not true. And Satan said, well, you take the hedge down and let me have him and see what happens. And well, that's exactly what happened. The hedge was taken away. And all God said was that you can have anything except his life. Now, that left everything on the table. Now, let's think about that for a minute. If Satan was 100% turned loose on you, and he had the power that God moved, moved his hand away from you, because God's protecting his people. You need to understand that. If, if God were to move his hand and Satan had 100% power over you, according to the story of Job alone, he would destroy everything you had. And that's what happens. <clears throat> In this first chapter, it talks about a number of things about Job and about the type of man that he was and about the conversation that Satan had with the Lord. And verse 12 says, And the Lord said unto Satan, Behold, all that he has is in your power. Only upon him, himself, put not your hand. So Satan went forth from the presence of the Lord. And I want to tell you something very important. If you read this story and you read it in a spiritual context, you will find out what happens when Satan is turned loose of you. Satan immediately killed his animals, immediately burned his fields, immediately killed his children. In fact, the scripture says that when one man was telling Job of an atrocity, a tragedy that was happening in his life, another man was standing in place ready to tell him another one. All of Job's kids were killed. All of his animals were destroyed. All of his fields were burned. Everything he had, one, two, three, gone. Every bit of it. Didn't wait. You know, somebody says to me, you know, boy, the devil's just been turned loose on me. It's not true. It's not true. Because if he was turned loose on you, he'd take everything you had. The devil is a liar. He is a thief. He comes to get you. Now, let's clarify. You could be tempted or tested by the enemy, for sure. But God still holds his hand up and holds Satan captive from coming into you. We This is a perfect picture. I mean, it tells you exactly what happens? And not only when Job lost all these things, Job says, hey, naked I came into the world, naked I leave, praise be the Lord. Then Satan struck him with sickness, physical, didn't kill him, but struck him with sickness. I mean, boils from head to foot, so bad that he sat in ashes and took clay pots and tried to scrape the sores. They were hurting so bad. Now, folks, it's important to understand that we have a caring God, a loving Savior that has his hand out to help you and to help me. And even though sometimes we do feel like the enemy's been turned loose, sometimes we feel like we can't get a break. I've had that happen to me, oh, I don't know, a bunch of times over these years. I've had somebody say, why don't the big guy give me a break? And I said, well, first of all, he's not the big guy. Why don't the man upstairs give me a break? Well, first of all, he's not the man upstairs. He is God Almighty. That's the issue. And God will put us in our place where we need to be how we need to be. Listen, why is God leaving you here? He's leaving you here to show a testimony to somebody about what is happening in your life. He is leaving you here because you can shine for him if you understand your relationship to him. 
You can't witness to anybody in a positive manner if you walk around and talk about how bad things are, the devil's beating me to death, I can't get ahead, I can't do this, I can't do that. Listen, God said, I will bless you. God said, I will take care of you. David of old said, I am now old, but once I was young, I have yet to see the righteous forsaken, nor their seed begging bread. And yes, war comes. And yes, atrocities come. And yes, wickedness comes. But God still has the final word. This is a wicked world in which we're living in. There's no mystery to that for any of us. So we need to understand that God is having mercy on his children. And whatever's going on in your life today, it's for a lesson. It's Now, if you do something wrong, it's for correction. He wants to put you back where you're supposed to be to where you do what you ought to do. Uh, so that's correction. But when he puts you in that situation, he expects you to learn from it. Why? Because you love him. I mean, if you don't love God, it doesn't matter then. We just cast everything to the wind. But understanding the love of God, the mercy of God, the grace of God. Somebody says, well, I'll tell you one thing. If this has been God's will, the way I'm suffering, I'd just rather be out of God's will. That's exactly what the devil's plan is. That's exactly. You know, the Bible says that the devil calls good evil and evil good. It is important to understand that we need to stand up for what is right in the name of Jesus Christ. You are somebody. Yes, I understand with all of my heart. I understand that there's rough days. There's tiring days. There's tough days. I understand all that. But let me tell you this that you need to get. You need to understand that God's love never changes for you. Somebody said one time, well, I had a family member that got killed in a car wreck. Or somebody shot him. Or somebody, they OD'd. Tragic stuff, all of it have no answers for it other than the fact that the devil got a hold of them and believed the lie and therefore they committed a terrible terrible transgression and i'm sorry about that could god have stopped it absolutely but god lets the world flow according to his own word he lets the world flow as it is until he redeems it back in revelation 19 so it's important to understand that god's got it figured out my job my responsibility is to do what I know and to do it every single moment of every single day. You say, now, whoa, wait a minute, preacher. Now you're talking about perfection. No, I'm not talking about perfection. The word perfect, by the way, in the scripture, in most cases, means completion. I want to be complete in Christ. I want to do what God has called me to do. Therefore, there's many things, beloved, according to the text, that I can say no to. There's many things that I can say as Satan came to Job to wipe him out. Job stood strong when his family was gone, when his animals were gone, when his land was gone, when his health was gone. And all these things, Job did not curse God. Why? You ever wondered about that? I'm going to give you one answer and close it out. Because Job knew God. That's why he never cursed him. Because the God that Job knew, even though he was in a tight spot, he recognized and respected the God that he knew enough to know that it was for his learning and our example and Christ's glory. And if you do that, God will bless you for it. God bless you. We love you and goodbye.